Welcome back to the Corner of Craft Podcast. I hope you're all well. Hopefully. If not, I hope you feel better soon. Clink. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've been here. I had to move some boxes, so I had a small table for my tea, so I wasn't bending down every two minutes. So things the world is now crashing round down around me. Um it's all good fun. But yes, I hope that you're all well. Um, I don't have an excuse as to why I haven't podcasted a long time. Well, I guess I'm going to tell you some excuses even though I don't have one. Um, I've been beading lots because I've got two shows this year and they're only a month apart. So that was really good planning past me when you thought applying to all the shows and saying yes um, when I got accepted would be a really good idea. But um, so I'm a bit stressed. But I'm okay, as a general rule. But I haven't had a whole lot of knitting time um, because I've just been beading lots. So I've got really dry, gross hands. It's really attractive. But my audience has grown slightly since the last time I've been here. So I'm just gonna give you a brief little introduction. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah, as I've already said. I am coming at you today from a overcast and windy and a little bit rainy but not too much Nottingham here in the UK. Um, I am the dyer behind Chromatic Yarns and I also make tiny beaded stitch markers um, under the Corner of Craft. Corner of Craft is the overall business name, Chromatic Yarns is just the yarn line. Yarn is dyed in, in colours inspired by Dungeons and Dragons which is always fun, unless you hate Dungeons and Dragons and then for you it wouldn't be fun, um, but um, that's also fine. Um, I don't have a professional lighting setup, at, and this is my window over here, so this side of my face always looks darker than this side. Um, my makeup isn't uneven, because I get comments on it um, saying, when did you notice your makeup was uneven? It's not shadow makes this look darker than this. But I promise you, please excuse the really the really dirty glasses. Let's take them off. They, it is, it is even-ish. Sisters, not twins. This is what I go for with my makeup. Um, I really enjoy drinking tea. Quite, ex that's to help nothing. Wool jumpers, wool is not made to clean glasses. Oh no, horrible. Um, I really enjoy drinking tea. I have a tea today. On the other side it says tea makes everything better but I filled up my tea too much so I'm scared to move too much because I've already spilled it on the tea twice. I've just spilled it on the tea, spilled the tea twice and I don't mean in the cool way of spilling the tea like gossiping which is what the cool kids say because they've taken on drag culture into their everyday vernacular but I mean like mm. I tried to take a selfie for Instagram stories, which is now back up because Instagram was down yesterday and um, I didn't know what to do with myself. It might mean I actually got quite a lot of work done, but um, I couldn't tell anyone about it, so that was slightly stressful. But um, yeah, I took an Instagram story. Um, I was taking on Snapchat because they've got a good filter that makes me look skinny and my skin look flawless. So every selfie of me has a Snapchat filter, the same Snapchat filter for consistency. So you think I actually look like that in real life? I don't, it's a Snapchat filter. Yeah, spilt tea on myself. Um, and then coming up the stairs, I also spilt tea um, because this is my craft room um, and it's a terrible mess. I was going to say what my mum used to call my messy room, but it's got now got weird sexual conno connotations. Uh, she used to call it a glory hole, which now has very different meaning in my mind. So let's not focus on that too much. The tea I'm drinking today, and I'm never sponsored by Bird and Blend, but I love their tea. I wish I was sponsored by Bird and Blend. Bird and Blend, please sponsor me. Although I can't say that, and I'll tell you in a second. Um, Banoffee Rumba, it's part of their spring collection. Um, I love sweet teas. It, I've got a killer sweet tooth. Um, and it's boozy banoffee pie with fresh bananas, cream, and a splash of rum. But I mean, I can't taste any rum Maybe I can, but I don't think I can taste any rum. It just tastes like a really nice banoffee flavour. Yum. Um, and it's a rhubarb tea, meaning it is caffeine free and I have it with a splash of milk. Here's what's in it. 
and Bird and Blend were really kind. I posted that I finished up my Monkey Chops tea, which is a black banana tea, which is a banana black tea. Um, and they sent me a little package when I was feeling really ill after Unravel. Um, well, I mean, they sent it before I was ill, but I, it can't, anyway. Um, and it had the two, two of the new spring teas, um, and another one of Monkey Chops in. So thank you very much, Bird and Blend. It's really nice. It means a lot. And it made me feel so much better. So much better. Oh, I forgot to do this last time. Let's quickly do admin. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. I'm the corner of craft at most places. All links can be found in the description box below. Also, there, there is a podcast group, and I've made podcast notes today, so you might actually get show notes. So, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm really bad at show notes. But on an entirely more serious note about a topic that has been widely discussed since early January... Um, predominantly on Instagram but also on YouTube. I haven't said anything yet about it. Um, I guess that I initially stayed quiet about it because I didn't really know what to say. I just wanted to take a step back from it all, and just listen to what was being said, learn from these fantastic people that were taking time that we don't deserve to educate us about what's happening you know I was to try to improve I've written a little thing because I wanted to make sure I said everything I wanted to try to improve any behaviors that I have that are damaging to others that I didn't realize because I do have privilege because I am a white woman not addressing the fact I have a privilege or even not having to address the fact I have a privilege is in itself a privilege. So it's not anyone in, it's not any one person's fault that they have privilege, but you, you have to acknowledge it in order to grow and improve and you know, and I'm not going to lie to you all when the conversations first started, I felt a little defensive whenever I think of racism I always thought of whenever I thought of racism I always thought of it being fueled with hate and hate speech and neo-nazis and extremities you know but actually that's not the case and systematic racism is a thing and I felt really defensive in the beginning I thought hey not all white people are racist and yeah I mean in my head that was just because I didn't hate anyone I thought that I couldn't be so instead of lashing out and reacting which some people have done and I'm not pointing fingers and saying that they're wrong but I thought why not I just take a step back and listen and learn from what was being said and try to better my imp my behaviours. But the conversation at the very beginning was overwhelming, it was confusing, it was a lot. But the more the conversation has been going on, either I, my, I'm learning more and therefore it's making more sense and the like, or I don't know, I guess I am just learning more and it's making more sense. In the beginning it was a lot of new information at once and it's like, I know, I'm currently learning to drive. In my first few driving lessons, I feel like I didn't learn anything because it was so much. It was intense. And it was difficult reading. Really difficult reading. When people started to share their experiences of racism that they'd experienced within the knitting community, I was heartbroken um they had been time zones so they'd been posted for me overnight so I woke up in the morning I think it was a Saturday morning I was lying in bed scrolling through Instagram stories and reading all of these horrific treatment that people have received good with words me I'm glad I wrote it down and I'm not looking at it at all um it just I was shocked I was genuinely shocked I was surprised 
and horrified. It's all too easy for me and other white people to just switch off social media and go and get on with their lives and pretend that it's not all happening and just go back to our knitting and but for so many people they're not able to do this. I've written the phrase here bubble of ignorance and I say it a lot to a lot of people I do exist in a bubble of ignorance whether it be like I don't know I just do it doesn't matter I don't need to explain that you know what I mean by bubble of ignorance I live in one sometimes but the point of this conversation is to pop that bubble of ignorance and improve. I've written it so much more eloquently on my phone than I've said it, but that's okay. We need to try to do our best to make spaces inclusive and safe and welcoming and all of that stuff. But it's about putting the work in to learn how to make those spaces, all of those things. You can't just sit there and declare, this is a safe and welcoming space, and then just go about your day like you didn't say anything, because that doesn't help anyone. I stayed silent for a really long time, I didn't want to just feel like I was saying something just for the sake of it, just to be, you know, part of it. I, I wanted to make sure that what I was saying had legs, and, um, because my, my silence won't help anything. I don't... I don't want to be roped under that that silent party that apparently agrees with the racism that's happening um, and whatnot. I didn't, we, we have to speak up. For many people this community is more than just about knitting, we can't just sit there, put our blinkers on and get on with our day. These conversations really do need to happen, we need to feel uncomfortable with ourselves, we need to question ourselves and our behaviours and why we do what we do and why we think what we think. I believe that without it, how can we truly call ourselves a knitting community? And how can we just get on with our knitting when we know that people are hurting in our community? Hopefully that ramble made some kind of sense and that it wasn't too rambly. I wrote stuff down and then didn't read it too much and then just referred to it as notes. Should have made bullet points, would have been much easier. Oh my god that tea is so good. Okay. It feels a bit weird to just be like, right, and so finish objects, but I'm going to because um, I don't have anything else to say to that and um, I feel like that I will just keep rambling on and on and I don't really... Anyway, so finish objects. I have, ooh, a couple. You may see that I'm wearing one. If you watched my Unravel vlog, you would already have seen this, but I finished my So Faded sweater. It took me like two weeks to knit. It was a ridiculously quick knit. I don't know how, because my other one is not going as quick. So I'm just gonna stand up and flash my boobs at you because that is what we do. I'm gonna pull my trousers up too. Really attractive. I'm really attractive. So, at the very top, we have Countess Ablaze Shit Tea and Tray Bake on her Lady Persephone sock, which is a BFL nylon blend. It's all four ply. The pattern is the So Faded sweater by Andrea Mowry. It's got fun little garter ridgy bits here and then goes into stocking stitch here and is stocking stitch all on the body. It's a top down raglan jumper with a bit of fading happening in. Um, the next one down, oh my hair, I've worn this jumper so much. The next one down is really flattering. Um, Fru Valborg, sorry to my Swedish listeners for my German accent on a Swedish name. Uh, this is Life on Mars, this is on a merino nylon blend. Uh, I want to say it's 80-20 blend. And then, right at the bottom, I'm not going to move because I don't have a t-shirt on under this and I don't want to show you my bra. Uh, this is, I could just stand up and show you really, that's sensible. This is Vull & Vine Yarns on her footsie base, which is a BFL blend, and um, it's in Dragon Tears. And these were not purchased altogether. 
these were purchased entirely separately and I was sat in my craft room doing my work looking at my stash and I thought they went well together so I finally knit it so faded. I knit the 41 inch bust, 43 inch bust. I finished it quite a long time ago so I don't actually know but it's got a nice amount of ease in it. Um, I usually don't knit that much ease into my jumpers and then don't wear them that much so I realised that I need to knit jumpers with a bit more ease so I wear them more and it's true it works I've not taken this off hardly at all I mean I obviously have because hygiene but um so the neckline first of all love all the yarns but the neckline I don't know what cast off I did because I can't remember my mum and dad were here uh, so I was probably a bit distracted and I might have just done a normal cast off. It's not stretchy <laughs> and so it's a little difficult getting it over my giant head because I do have a giant head. Um, so it's a little bit tricky putting the jumper on but it's here, it's on. I get makeup all over it when I take it off because it like scrapes past my head because it's just not very stretchy. So the next one that I'm knitting will be having a stretchier cast off. I knit three quarter length sleeves because I always roll my sleeves up anyway. Um, plus I really like three quarter length sleeves. Perfect light spring jumper, which is great if spring ever comes back. I mean, I know it will, but it just seems a long time coming at this point. I got a surprising amount of compliments on this at um, Unravel, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, so that's finished object numero uno um, because I'm so multilingual. Okay, the next finished object, I hadn't anticipated, realised that I was doing this, but I'm wearing them, so um, my socks. Yeah. Ta-da! I finished my Christmas Eve cast on, finally! I'm going to put a picture in, just so I don't have to do that for the whole time. The yarn is all for hook's sake, and I want to say it's in pastel neons, the colour. Um, I did an afterthought heel. I did 60 stitches on a 2.5mm needle. I did 18 rounds, 20 rounds of 1x1 one one rib. I did, I did an afterthought heel, the cutting one. Um, wobbly Bubblies, Kirby Wurbies, Kirby Wurby is not Wobbly Bubblies, <laughs> Kirby Wurby's Afterthought Heel, which is a video on YouTube, and I just used some charcoal grey um, wool and acrylic blend that I got from Sustrena Grüne, Grüne, which is just a little shop that sometimes has wool in it. Translates to Sisters Green, let's be honest. And yeah, I finished these before I went on holiday because I wanted to use the needles because I wanted to cast Mario on a pair of socks to knit while we were there and I've got a bit of a sob story about this sock. Um, but I thought, right, I need to finish these socks. So I just did it and it didn't take very long and I don't know why I put it off so much. I also knit, I haven't put these in my notes, but I also knit a tie. It's the wedding tie. I can't remember who it's by, but I'll put it on the screen. Um, I knit a tie for my friend who had mentioned ages ago that he wanted a knitted tie, so I made him one. Um, it's really, really long. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but I gifted it to him on Saturday, so I can't show you it, which is really annoying and my fault for not podcasting sooner. Uh, okay. Um... This is a cowl that I test knit for my friend Miranda, um, who is the knitting panda. And this was a, she designed this cowl. I believe it's called the Riverbed Cowl. Let's get the email, nope, that's Pinterest. Nope, that's still Pinterest. Let's get the email up. Um, that's the wrong email address. River Rock. It's the River Rock Cowl. Sorry, Miranda. I should have been better prepared. I just wrote cowl in my notes. I'm very thorough. 
Um, and it's this really beautiful pebble stitch pattern that I'd never done before. Um, really easy to do. I knit this using my Knit Crate yarns. It was the Artisan Crate and it was the Christmas one. And it was by the Yarnbury in Copperfield colour. And it's on an alpaca wool blend. Um, it says it's worsted weight, but I think it's a bit chunkier than a worsted weight. Um, but I'm not overly familiar with using worsted weight yarns, so maybe it's not. But it's really soft. I don't really know how to wear cowls, so I've just put it on and I'm hoping for the best. Because um, I don't knit a whole lot of cowls because I don't know how to wear them. But this is it. It's a gorgeous orange colour and I've still got some left. So I'm either going to make some form of glove or try to squeeze a hat out of it. But that might be too risky. But it's just really nice. Really soft. I knit it really quickly because uh, I was late getting started because hi... That's apparently who I am. I'm usually much better at test knits. I mean, it's got this gorgeous stitch pattern on it. Oh, beautiful. And it's really easy to do. Um, I will keep you posted about when that pattern's coming out because I'm not entirely sure. Um, but very enjoyable knit. Um, knit on higher higher sharps 5.5 millimeter needles i believe and yes yeah, so soft i still technically need to block it i don't want it to grow because i quite like the size it is but i should block it shouldn't i sorry miranda i'm usually much better than this my cowl um i used my cowl when i was filming myself knitting from like first person perspective um, it worked really well. You just kind of tuck your phone in like this and film yourself knitting. <laughs> Pro tip. Pro tip for people that want to film themselves knitting at any point. And moving right along, let's get into whips. Um, I've got a couple. I've got a couple. So let's start with and my bag's on, no it's not, it's fine. Let's start with this one. This is technically also um, in stash fattening slash acquisitions. But I got a Christmas present from Becky who is, <laughs> not while I'm talking, not while I'm talking, who is Soprano Knits um, and hostess of the Stringing It Together podcast. Um, and she made me I mean, I got a plethora of things because she's too generous, but she, oh, oh, Becky, I'm using the notebook for my podcast notes. Um, she also made me this amazing cat sushi bag to the point where we opened our presents on Skype um, because Becky is was my neighbour when I used to live in Germany and we became firm, firm friends. And then I abandoned her and came back to the UK. Um, so I was but we still text daily and I'm still obsessed with her. And tell you what, going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival next week and not having her there with me is going to be heartbreaking because I've only been to EYF twice and Becky was with me both times, at least for some of it last year, at least for like 16 hours of it last year. But it also almost killed her because um, over working and over having fun and no resting. But um, she made me this bag and it's got sushi cats on uh, because when we were in Germany, we invited her around and we'd have sushi sometimes. We'd make sushi and have sushi. And um, I used to feed her cats and I love her cats and sushi cats. But living in this bag, yeah, when I received this and opened it, I kind of wanted to ask her if she'd made it, but also felt like if she hadn't, that would be rude because it was so good. Because it has a zip on it and everything. Anyway. So this is my next so faded that I took to unravel with me and actually knit quite a lot of, but I had to get that tie done. It was a whole lot of seed stitch, uh, moss stitch. I can't, I don't know the difference. Right, in hindsight, I would like to have these yarns in a different order, but I can't do anything about it. Well, I can, but I don't really want to rip it back and I'm just gonna keep going with it because I can't work out if I like it or if I hate it. <laughs> so 
This is what I fondly refer to as my sexy boob jumper for reasons that only Caroline of Dundonit and the hostess of the Knitting by KLC podcast will understand. Um, it has not got anything to do with the fact that these three yarns were bought intentionally to become a so faded um, and uh, they're all part of the Tits Out Collective that the Countess of Blaze, that Countess of Blaze did last year. They're doing something else this year, I believe. So this top one is Beehive Yarns. They're all on Merino sock yarn, so Merino nylon blends. So this top one is, yep. Yeah. And then this next one is, um, yeah, Beehive, Beehive Yarns. This next one is Dragon Horde Yarns, and I've just barely started to fade into Rusty Ferret Yarns. Now, I was trying, I was hoping that this would be ready for an Amarillo Festival. I don't know if that's gonna happen, um, because this time next week, I will be there. Uh, and I've got something else I need to finish, and I want to finish that other thing more, because it's been on the needles longer. Um, yes, so this is that one. It's beautiful, it's grey with speckles. But I, I have a bit of an I mean, I haven't looked at this in absolutely ages, but now I've got it out, I think I have a bit of an issue with the fact that this, look. it looks disjointed. It doesn't look like a fade, it looks disjointed. And the next section will look disjointed too. And I don't know if that is gonna be an issue for me, because it's basically just gonna be like this block on my stomach, which is not the area that I'm most comfortable with. In fact, it's the area I'm probably least comfortable with on my body, other than the size of it. But um, if I were to do this again, and there's nothing to say that I won't other than the, my pure laziness, laziness, I would put Dragon Horde yarn at the top, then I'd put this one, and then I'd put Rusty Ferret, be happy and then I put Rusty Ferret. I just changed the order of the top two, I'd swap them around because, well, because this just looked much white. This is why you should always knit a swatch. This just looked much whiter in the skein than it's knit up, it looks much pinker than it's knit up, and I think that that would be a nice one to go between the um Dragon Horde yarn and the and the Rusty Ferret because the Rusty Ferret has a lot of oranges in and Tristan's yarn um, doesn't have as much orange in. And I feel like that maybe it doesn't look as good as I want it to. And it worries me slight, because these are already colors outside of my comfort zone for clothing. And I can't really say that, because so is this. I wear black all the time. Black and gray are my colors of choice, but Knitwear's a bit different, isn't it? But it's a bit zany and out there. I don't know if this just looks, I'm just gonna hold it up, I can't see the camera. Don't know if this just looks disjointed and messy. Looks better on the back than it does on the front. Maybe I've just gotta suck it up and just go for it and then just wear it and then deal with it. That's probably what I will end up doing. It wasn't that profound of a sentence, me. I've just got fluff all over me from that alpaca. It's so soft though, it's so worth it. But yes. Um, yeah, I'm just fading it in. I've got two more rows to go. I've not touched this in ages because I have another knit that's taken over my life as well as just beading to do. When I say I've got extremely dry hands, I'm not joking. I'm not gonna show you because I bite my nails, it's not attractive. But um, I have a little beaded sloth slash sloth, whatever you call it, to keep me company as I knit round. He brings a little smile to my face. When I get to the end of the row, maybe I will continue to knit this for a little bit whilst I'm chatting to you all. My next whip are the living in my exploding Van Gogh exploding TARDIS bag that Bernadette of Coffee and Craft and Eco Geek made for me because this is my ultimate favorite sock project bag. Um, literally the only sock project bag that I just keep going back to. I can't help it. It's just, ow, just stab myself. Oh, I'm knitting these on 3.75 millimeter needles. The jumper is knit on there. These socks, I'm part way through a row because why? Oh, we went out for coffee yesterday. By coffee, I mean I had tea. 
Um, and Mario had a double espresso because he's that guy now. We went to Italy for one week and now he's more Italian than ever before. And his name's Mario. Well, I mean, he is part Italian. So I'm just going to get to the end of this row. Uh, yeah, we went to Sicily last week. That was a lot of fun. Um, this should be in just normal chit chat. But I'm currently getting to look to the end of my, the row of my sock. Um, but yeah, it meant that I managed to get a lot of knitting done on one particular project, which I was hoping to have finished by the time that we left, but I definitely didn't have it finished. And maybe I'll try to knit some this evening. I've got a driving lesson in a couple of hours, so that always knackers me out. Time's it. I still have time. So, these socks are Mario socks. Small tale of woe. Um, before I get into them. I cast these socks on on the plane and I knit them and I was doing the heel and I was I hadn't increased any stitches for the heel because Mario doesn't have as deep an instep as I do. I always do the New Depths heel by Becky Sorensen. I always do them. I have a high arch. But um, I realised that my maths that I'd worked out was wrong and I was like, how? Then I realised I'd cast on 64 stitch sock instead of 72 stitch sock and I thought, hmm, am I going to keep knitting this sock and have it as a shop sample or am I going to rip it back and start again? I ripped it back and started again. I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. So uh, this was past the heel and <laughs> now is not. Um, but yeah, I couldn't keep knitting on it because I was like, this is wrong. This is so wrong. So now my mojo's gone a little bit, but um, that's okay. So this beautiful yarn, it's totally biased, is in a nushed up label. It's Chromatic Yarns, which is my own hand dyed yarn, in the colour Pseudo Dragon on my sturdy sock base, which is 75% superwash blue face lester and 25% nylon. Makes for some very nice sturdy socks, which is what Mario needs because I don't knit him that many pairs. So um, he wears them quite a lot and I need to knit him more socks. But knitting a 72 inch sock versus a 60 stitch sock, which is what I knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, is a significant difference. Well, yeah, obviously it's 12 stitches, but you know what I mean. Um, yes, it's just this beautiful, fiery colour. It's part of my Fay Wild collection that I came out with a couple of weeks ago and had a lot of fun dyeing up. Pseudo dragons are like these small, I say small, like small little dragons that usually wizards have as pets. And yeah, I decided that pseudo dragon would make a great pair of socks for a Mario. So he's getting some. It's knitting up a bit pinker than I thought it would, but I don't hate it. In fact, I quite love it and kind of want to jump out of it. This is a really unattractive cake because obviously I um, messed up, ripped back, and the like. But yeah, Mario's getting Mario's getting a sock. So that's living in there. And then. I switched out the bag that this was living in for traveling purposes because I thought traveling that with that many badges added quite a lot of weight. So I switched it to my Fluff Hunter, Fluff Hunter um, bag, which is by Yana Street. Um, and from some of the various Ikea, I wanna say memes, but I don't know if they are technically memes, uh, knitting -y things that they came up with, or Miss Yana Street came up with. Um, and this is my Voltage Shawl, which is a pattern by Sue Stratford, and I met Sue at uh, Unravel, because Caroline knows her, so I met her and had a bit of a chat with her. So, I was in a bit of a hump with this, and was really grumpy with it, and just wanted it finished, and was so angry at it. I don't know why, because then once I started working on it, I was like, this isn't that bad actually, I quite like it. Um, I think I just objected to having to look at the pattern so much, but it's really not that difficult once you get into the swing of things. Anyway, I don't know what I was ranting about, but I didn't put a stitch marker in when you last saw it, but I was around about here. I was, or maybe a bit lower, I was close to the end of the third chart um and so yeah i'm done the fourth chart completely and i'm now into the fifth chart and it's a bit of a beast so yeah the voltage i don't know how to hold this with showing you it all 
the voltage short it's a lightning bolt it's pretty darn cool it is knit entirely out of rusty ferret yarns not sponsored at all although lj if you would like to hi um this black one i believe is static it's all on her doll base which is 75 25 superwash merino and nylon it's very thought. um this one is quarantine yeah static quarantine and then this fluorescent yellow is sunbeam sunshine sun sunbeams sun something to do with the sun feel like Billy Connolly in Muffet Treasure Island, which I watched the other night, which is probably why I'm making the reference, like, Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jim. Um, yeah, really excited to wear it. I want it finished by EYF so I can show LJ in person and um, show it off because it's a lot of knitting. I'm a little concerned. I've got 12 rows left, which is also two more increases on both the grey and the yellow part oh don't know if this does anything for my cut i don't care um i have this much left of my grey and i have an eye cord cast off to do as well so i'm a little concerned but i don't think it will be too heartbreaking if i end it a row early or would you like to see my intarsia thought you would hi this is my intarsia oh let's do it on a brighter one Oh, so neat and tidy. I'm very proud of myself. This is my first Intarsia project and um, it showed me that actually Intarsia is not as difficult as you may have previously thought. As in, not actually difficult at all. You just get in a bit of a tangle, but tell you what, pro tip, you're knitting that short and you're getting fed up with your yarns tangling, um, ignore the fact they're tangling. That is my pro tip for you because I ignored the fact that yarn, yarns were tangling and I like every, I don't know, 10 rows, I'd sit and untangle them and they're not as tangled as you think they are. I'd sit and untangle them and usually if you untangle one, the other two just spring apart and then um, you're untangled and then you can just do that again. It's much easier than trying to untangle it every single row, which got intense, which is also why I think I objected to it a little bit. There were my whips. Voltage shawl, so faded. Sock. Yes. Um, because this video is already pretty long, I'm not going to show you all the yarns that I got at Unravel. Um, if you would like to watch that, it is actually in my Unravel vlog, which I will try to put in a card. Um, I want to get better at doing cards, but I'm lazy. Um, on Rebel Vlog, yes, uh, Caroline and I did a haul together and it was a lot of fun. And pro tip, have a drink with you and drink every time I say, mm-hmm, uh, because it's a lot. Apparently that's a thing that I do that I didn't realise. But I did get a new pin badge that I would like to share with you. It came in the post the other day. It is from Wistful Empire and it's a druid staff. So it's wistfulempire.com. Oh, I'll just show you this. Wistfulempire.com. Uh, are you going to focus? Uh, are you going to focus? Yeah, down here. She has various other uh, Dungeons and Dragons classes too. But I play a druid. My little Ellen. My fur bulk. My world. Oh my goodness. The other day. The other day. Well, yeah, it was the other day. We, our d, &D group fought some um, skeletons and there were skeleton horses and it was pretty cool. So Ellen, who is my furbolg druid, a furbolg is this tall, fluffy, cute thing, um, summoned or conjured an animal. I chose an elk. The elk won the day. He was just charging around, headbutting everything. And are you gonna focus back on my face? Yes. He was charging around, headbutting everything and it was a lot of fun but yeah so i got a staff for my druid who i mean she's technically got a spider staff but this is cuter so i'm going to imagine and i made her by knitting needles the other day wistful empire is based in australia but i didn't get dinged with customs charges or anything so and it came pretty quick so in i also got a knit crate box but i might open that 
in a separate video because otherwise this is I think it's going to be too long. Yeah, I'll open that straight away afterwards and upload it separately. Um, yeah, cool. I think that's all I've got for stash fattening. Um, I don't think I have had anything else come. So I'm going to swiftly move into shop update news because I've got some exciting shop update news. Uh, two things, I'm at two shows this year, one in June, which is the Wool Monty that is based in Sheffield. It's at the Arena, which is a huge venue. Um, it's the first one this year and I'm excited to be a part of it. Also slightly nervous uh, because, hello, hi, how are you? This is me, I get unrationally nervous and stressed about um, yes, so that is the 15th and 16th of June, and then one month later, which I think is the 17th and 18th of July, the 18th and 19th of July, I am going to be at Yarningham, which is just outside of Birmingham and has been running for a few years now, but it's going to be my first year there because I only did my first show in Nottingham last year. And I'm so sad because I had such a good time at Nottingham Yarn Expo last year, and the um, applications are open for this year, but I can't apply. I mean, I could. I'm not going to apply. Oh, I didn't put my fairy lights on. I'm not going to apply because it's the day after my wedding and I feel like that would be a bit weird. And I emailed them to tell them that I wouldn't be able to apply because honeymoon. And they said that they thought it would be a great, oh no, because wedding. They said they thought it would be a great honeymoon um, location. I was like, yeah, good point, good point, but still no. Um, yes, so that's happening. Also, I'm, I'm going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival next year, next year, next week, uh, not to vend purely for my own selfish reasons of shopping and hugging friends. Um, but I know that a lot, I'm knitting, I know that a lot of people can't go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival for any reason. So I decided for you lovely lot, because I don't want you all to miss out because that's no fun for anyone. Um, I'm going to be having a huge yarny shop update. So I've been busy this week dyeing up, for me, loads of yarn, but for many yarn dyes, it's probably just like an average day. I've got some new bases going in. Do -do 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 -do. I'm not gonna show you all of them because some are still drying downstairs, but Tweed, I got it, I got some tweed, and I'll tell you what, slightly upset. Uh, this one is still unnamed and I'm yet to name. I've had some great suggestions on Instagram. Yeah. It's just like a silvery gray with blues and turquoises and ooh. Uh, I've got Storm of Vengeance on Tweedy Sock. I don't think it's called Tweedy Sock, I think I've just called it Tweed Sock. I don't know, it's not in the shop yet. Um, this one is School of Enchantment. I do know the names of my arms. Uh, and because the tweed is slightly grey, it's a BFL tweed blend. So oh, I'm going to completely butcher the pronunciation. Um, this is a personal fave. I shouldn't have hidden it behind me. I should have put it out on display. Um, yeah, so it's 85% Blueface Leicester uh, Superwash and it's 15% Donegal, 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 not Donegal like McGonagall, like I've said before, Tweed, uh, Nep, sorry, um, and it gives these really fun Tweedy flecks. So this top one is Rock Gnome, which is a very popular colour, my shop, and then this bottom one is Tabaxi, um, which I don't want to sell and want to dye some up, or I want to sell it and dye some up and keep it, because... I want to jump her out of it and I've got some several other things. Um, I also am going to be having some sock sets in the shop, um, just a couple, which is exciting, and a bunch of 100% merino, which I don't have in the shop very often, and also uh, some merino cashmere nylon, which I forgot how soft it is. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to have those bases going in the shop and because I love you all very much I'm going to be offering you 15% off that might change as in you might get more percentage off I need to do some maths but you might you, you'll you'll get at least 15% off um using the code yarnfestfomo 
FOMO, for those that don't know, means fear of missing out. I get extreme FOMO all the time from yarn festivals, especially the ones in the States. Um, but yes, yarn fest FOMO. That will be, that code will be live from, and the shop update will be, 9am on GMT on Thursday the 21st of March. Um, because that is when doors open for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And that code will be going right through till midnight on the Sunday, which is the 24th, I believe. Um, so yeah, go and treat yourself. Um, one last thing. I will the, be having a shop update on Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 16th at 4pm GMT, for the April Stitch Marker Club, I have shipped out marches. It is on its way to you if you haven't already got it. Um, and April's will, sign-ups will be open. There are very limited slots available because two hands um, beading things takes at least 20 minutes. None of the charms that I make are any quicker than 20 minutes. Um, they're usually more around the half an hour mark. Chose a really good business and really good. It's all right. I find it very therapeutic and relaxing. It's great, especially for someone who is such a stress head. Um, but yes. Oh, also any ready to ship stitch markers will also get the Yarnfest FOMO discount. All, all of the discounts are only for the ready to ship things, not for the pre-order things. At the same time as that yarn update I'm going, that I just told you about, I'm also going to be having a bit of a de-stash. I decided it's time. I've still got some things that I'm trying to let go of. <laughs> because, um, yeah. But my stash just keeps growing and growing and growing and it's getting ridiculous. So I'm going to have a bit of a de-stash. Um, I have a lot of yarns that I've received um, that are going to be going in give that are already in the giveaway box um, for future cows and such. But any that I have bought will be going in the de-stash. Um, by yarns that I've received, I mean from Knit Crate. I don't mean from anyone else because that's not what I mean. I mean from like Knit Crate yarns go in the cow bin. By bin, I mean box. I don't need to explain myself anymore. I'm already over explaining. Um, but yes, yarns that I've bought that I just don't know if I'm going to knit with are currently in a bag and I'm trying to decide if I want them or not. I get very emotionally attached to things, so I'm trying to be better at it. The whole sparking joy thing, and just hopping on that bandwagon, 100p. Um, but yes, so d stash, that's also going to be happening. So you, you can give yarns a new home and a new lease of life and a new sense of purpose. Think. So that is all I have for knitting at the moment. I mean, that's already pretty long. But, um, yeah, life things. This time next week I will be in Edinburgh again, very excited about Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, I'm very excited about it. I'm getting to meet some friends that I haven't met before and see some friends that I have met before and just have a lot of fun. My mum's coming with me on the Saturday, so that should be fun. It's her first yarn festival experience, so that's going to be filled with overwhelm. I've already told her that she's going to be overwhelmed and that she needs to make a list of things that she wants to buy yarn for. Yes. Um, what's been happening? Um, went to Sicily, had a really nice holiday, um, just chilling out. Maria's mum's living out there at the moment, so we went and visited them. And then, just general wedding prep. I bought a wedding dress. I don't know if that had happened the last time that I podcast. When I say I bought a wedding dress, I mean I chose a wedding dress and my family so generously paid for the wedding dress, which is ridiculous, but I'm so grateful for. Um, what else has happened? Driving lesson, oh my goodness, the world about the recycling men. That is the best recycling 
vehicle ever. It had like a sea theme. Sorry. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. Driving lessons, they're going well, they're going alright. I had a week off, obviously, while I was away, uh, witnessing a lot of crazy Italian driving, which is... Uh, what? How do you get driving licences? It's crazy Italian driving. Um, but yes, I have a driving lesson this afternoon. I think it's going well. I don't know. I'm in a perpetual state of this. So tense. I'm so tense when I drive. The whole time I'm just like, I'm a natural. I hate it. I don't hate driving, I hate being bad at things. That's what I hate. But unfortunately, you've got to be bad at things to get good at things sometimes. And as a child that was gifted at school, I'm not used to being told that I can't do something. Other than that, I don't think a whole lot's been happening. I mean, I'm sure as soon as I've left, I'll be like, oh, this happened. Um, bloop. Yeah, I went out to London, stayed with Caroline. We had a really lovely time. Um, her house is lovely. Her cat is lovely. She is lovely. I'd never met her before. So that's always nerve wracking, but she is exactly how you see her on her podcast. So that's always nice. Um, and I don't know why I worry because I'm pretty much exactly how I am on my podcast So I don't know why I think other people won't be but then you know There's just the stress of traveling down to London to then stay with someone that you've not met Although I traveled all the way to Sweden to stay with someone that I'd never met before so I guess London isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things when you consider Sweden But luckily I've got on with all of my internet friends so far Otherwise, that would have been a really awkward few days. We had a really lovely time at Unravel. 100% um, blamed under it for a couple of my purchases. One purchase, actually. Mm, one and a bit, because one of the things was actually hers that um, we then made a deal on. But if you want to check out anything about Unravel, well, not anything, as in the day that we shared, um, feel free to check out the vlog. Um... A lot of fun. I will be vlogging at a Real Festival, don't you worry, because I enjoy doing that too. Um, I might have to pre-warn my mother because she might, I don't know if she knows that I vlog these things. I don't want her to feel awkward. I'll ask her if she minds. She won't mind, but I'll ask her all the same. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I think that's everything I have to say because I'm speaking in circles. Cool. Yeah. I hope that you all have a lovely fortnight because I'll probably next see you in the Edinburgh Art Festival vlog. Um, because I'll be there this time next week and I won't have got much knitting done in the meantime. But yes, if you see me at EYF, please come and say hi. I want to meet you. Um, also, when you come and say hi, Please tell me both your name and your Instagram handle because I usually recognise people by their Instagram username more than anything else. Not my fault. Um, yes, I hope that you're all well. Don't forget to check out the group for podcast notes and uh, feel free to follow me on social media if you would like for more information on shop updates and uh, sneak peek about my life, Beso. Um, and with all that being said, I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!